Hola, ¿cómo estás? Espero que todo esté bien contigo. This is Tamara Marie, host of the Learn Spanish con Salsa podcast. I wanted to ask you a quick question before we get started with this episode. Do you have trouble hearing and understanding native Spanish speakers? Whether you've been learning Spanish for two weeks or two years, it can be a struggle to really understand the fast pace of Spanish spoken by native speakers. So if that's you, don't worry, I got you. I have developed a method that will help you understand 80% of spoken Spanish in less than 30 minutes. This method will help you improve your ability to hear and understand native Spanish speakers so you can increase your listening comprehension and shed your fear of being afraid to start a conversation. You know, a lot of times we don't want to talk to someone in Spanish because we're afraid that when they talk back, we're not going to understand what they say. So we really need to get after that fear by improving our Spanish listening skills. So if this is something that you're interested in, I'd love to share it with you. I'm providing access to this masterclass absolutely free so that you can learn how to improve your Spanish listening skills. If you want to sign up, just go to SpanishConSalsa.com slash listen. That's SpanishConSalsa.com slash listen. Now, we're only going to have this masterclass available for a limited time, so make sure you sign up today if you want to get access, SpanishConSalsa.com slash listen. Okay, let's get to this episode of the podcast. Today, we're talking about something that is all over the news. Elections. Now, with the U.S. election happening today and lots of political news in Latin America, it's a perfect time to pick up some Spanish phrases for talking about politics. So whether you want to share your opinions, ask questions, or just understand what others are saying, we're going to cover how to navigate conversaciones políticas en español. Entonces, vamos a empezar. Let's get started. Bienvenidos. 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 Welcome, Welcome to, to the Learn Spanish, Spanish con Salsa, Salsa podcast. podcast. The show for Spanish learners that love music, travel, and culture. Close your grammar textbooks, shut down the language apps, and open your ears to how Spanish is spoken in the real world. Let us show you how to go from beginner to bilingual. Here's your host, certified language coach, Tamara Marie. Welcome to the podcast. Now, listen, I know that if you live in the United States, you are probably tired of hearing about politics at this point, especially if you happen to live in one of the infamous swing states. So we're not really going to get into any uh, specific political uh, debates or discussions, but if you have conversations with friends, family, maybe you have a tutor, uh, one of your language coaches, or any language exchange partners that are from Latin America, or maybe they currently live in Latin America, the topic will probably come up at some point. So my intention with this episode is just to arm you with a couple of phrases so that you can have a conversation if someone asks you questions, and also if you're just not interested in talking about it, right? At least you'll understand uh, what's being asked of you and you'll know how to gracefully uh, change the subject. But it is in the news, it's very ubiquitous. And I also did wanna share with you that there's some interesting facts about Latin American politics that you might not be aware of. And I think a lot of times when you're learning Spanish, uh, especially if you're from the US or from Canada, you know, our perspective about uh, politics is really based upon our experience. And this can be a great opportunity for you to learn about uh, the culture and political realities in other countries in Latin America, because they all are very different. So we don't want to just assume that every country is the same, because uh, we all know the culture is different, so the politics are also different. And again, this can be a touchy subject for, for some people. I know I have found that when diving into politics in general, it can always be a little bit difficult, but if you approach it with the spirit of curiosity, then I think it can be a very valuable conversation and it can lead to you increasing your understanding of Latin American culture. All right. Entonces, empezamos con algunos hechos de esta elección de 2024 en Estados Unidos y también política de América Latina. So let's start with some facts about the 2024 election in the U.S. as well as Latin American politics. Este año, la vicepresidenta Kamala Harris se presenta como candidata a la presidencia, haciendo historia como la primera mujer de ascendencia afroamericana y surasiática 
que se presenta a las elecciones presidenciales. Vice President Kamala Harris uh, here in the U.S. is running as a presidential candidate, making history as the first woman of African American and South Asian descent to seek the presidency. La presencia de mujeres en altos cargos políticos no es una novedad en América Latina. De hecho, hay varias líderes femeninas haciendo historia en la región. So the presence of women in top political roles is not new in Latin America. In fact, there are several female leaders that have been making history across the region. La más reciente, la presidenta Claudia Sheinbaum, tomó posesión como nueva presidenta de México en Ciudad de México en octubre tras ganar las elecciones en junio. Most recently, President Claudia Sheinbaum was sworn in as Mexico's new president in Mexico City in October 2024 after winning the election in June. También tenemos Dina Boluarte. Ella es presidenta de Perú desde diciembre de 2022. So we also have Dina Boluarte. She uh, is the president of Peru. She's been president since December 2022. She was also the first woman in that role. Y Epsi Campbell Barr fue la primera vicepresidenta afrodescendiente de Costa Rica de 2018 a 2022. In Costa Rica, Epsi Campbell Barr served as the first black female vice president from 2018 to 2022. So I just wanted to share some of that with you because I know that, again, if you live uh, in North America, and you're not so much tuned into Central American or South American politics or even Mexican politics, some of this might be new information, but it might come up again as the conversation around, you know, a woman running for president in the United States and just kind of understanding that in Latin America that women have also been um, recently uh, becoming um, presidents, vice presidents, uh, and this is not something new in that region. So that might be a great conversation point. So let's get into some phrases that you can use in Spanish for discussing politics. So these can be used to talk about elections in general, uh, but they're useful if you want to have conversations and you want to express how you feel about what's going on if someone asks you. Okay, so one thing that you might want to say, (laughs) which I know a lot of people resonate with this, estoy nervioso por las elecciones. O una mujer puede decir, Estoy nerviosa por las elecciones. So this literally translates to, I am nervous about the elections. (laughs) So this is something that you can say, um, you know, depending on how you're feeling right now. And a lot of people are anxious to see what the result is going to be, Um, especially in the United States. It's seen as this very polarizing time. So a lot of people are nervous. So it might be something that you want to say. Estoy nervioso por las elecciones o estoy nerviosa por las elecciones. Now, if you want to explain a little bit more, you can say, um, estoy nerviosa por la economía o por los cambios que pueden venir. So I'm nervous because of the economy or because of the changes that could come. So again, this is just a way to express. And, and the key thing here is the por las elecciones. So in this case, por is meaning because of or due to. Um, it doesn't mean, you know, for. So even though you could kind of say, oh, I'm nervous for the elections, it really means that I'm nervous about the election or I'm nervous because of the election. Uh, something else you can say if someone's asking you um, about how you tend to vote, you can say, soy votante independiente. Soy votante independiente. So I'm an independent voter. So again, if you don't want to talk about political parties too much, or you really don't want to explain so much about, you know, Democrats, Republicans, you can say, I'm an independent voter. Another thing that you can say is, uh, voy a votar hoy, voy a votar hoy. So I'm going to vote today. Uh, Or you can say, ya voté, ya voté. So I already voted. Uh, if you want to talk about sort of how you're feeling about how things might turn out, you can say, Espero que los resultados sean positivos. Espero que los resultados sean positivos. So I hope the results are positive. So again, this espero que, uh, this is you know, expressing hope, una esperanza, something you're hopeful for. And so we're using the subjunctive with the verb ser. So we're saying sean positivos because resultados is plural. So I hope the results are positive. Now, if you are following the news a little more closely, here's some other, uh, you know, phrases that might be useful to you. 
uh, you can say los candidatos tienen plataformas muy diferentes. Los candidatos tienen plataformas muy diferentes. So the candidates have very different platforms. Uh, you can also say me, me preocupa por la política. Me preocupa por la política. So I'm worried about politics. Okay, so similar to the one we had before. And if you really don't want to talk about it, this is a great phrase. No tengo una opinión muy fuerte sobre esto. No tengo una opinión muy fuerte sobre esto. So it means I don't have a really strong opinion about this. You know, and you can also say, no quiero hablar de la política. Yo no quiero hablar sobre la política o de las elecciones. So I don't want to talk about politics. I don't want to talk about the elections. You can also say that. Uh, but saying you don't have an opinion is also kind of a way to just change the subject. Okay, so uh, here, those are just some things that I hope that, again, uh, you found helpful. Now, if you do want to say that you feel it's important and you want to express your feelings, you want to go deeper into it, you can say something like, Creo que estas elecciones son muy importantes. Creo que estas elecciones son muy importantes. So I believe or really feel that uh, these elections are very important. You know, and then you can sort of explain why from there. Um, and talk about the reasons why. Um, and again, you know, I don't, like I said at the beginning of this, I'm not going to get into too deep in terms of like political topics here in the U.S., but um, this will give you a starting point to have these conversations. And if you're with a conversation partner or a tutor, you can definitely ask them, you know, how they would express those things in their country or in Spanish. Now, beyond just talking about U.S. politics, right, so let's talk about how we can use this as an opportunity to get to know a little bit more about other countries and not just the United States. Uh, so there's some questions that you can ask for of a friend or a language exchange partner about the politics in their country. And this is, again, this is a great way to start the conversation, uh, to have some curiosity and use it as a learning opportunity about Latin American culture. So you can ask a question like, ¿Cuáles son los principales partidos políticos en tu país? ¿Cuáles son los principales partidos políticos en tu país? So what are the main political parties in your country. So the word partido um, in, in this context is talking about a political party. Now it can also be a sports game, un partido de fútbol, pero en este caso estamos hablando de la política, entonces partidos políticos are political parties. So this is similar, you know, to asking about, you know, Democratic and Republican parties in the U.S., uh, but many countries actually have multiple political parties. They're not just two-party systems. So this is a great opportunity to find out more, again, about um, the differences between politics in the U.S. and in Latin America. You could also ask the question, uh, ¿Cuándo son las elecciones en tu país? ¿Cuándo son las elecciones en tu país? So when are the elections in your country? So again, many people are familiar with the U.S. election cycle, especially for president. Um, and there's many, many other elections, but this is something you can always ask just again um, to either divert the conversation away from talking about the election today or, you know, in the future, because here in the U.S., as I'm, you know, talking about this, it is election day. But as we know, it's a process before the next president is inaugurated in a a January of 2025. So uh, so it, this this topic may may come up. Right. So. Uh, it's definitely a great opportunity to ask a, a question about, well, how, how do they do elections in your country? Um, and then really get to learn about um, those differences. You can also just ask a very general question. ¿Qué tipo de gobierno tiene tu país? ¿Qué tipo de gobierno tiene tu país? So what type of government does your country have? So again, this can help you understand if the country has a similar structure to the U.S. with three branches of government, you know, legislative, judicial, and executive, or if they have a different system like a parliamentary system uh, like they have in some countries in Europe. So again, this is a great way to, to begin to learn more about um, other countries uh, and the political situation there. And you can also ask the question, because, you know, assuming we're assuming that people have elections, right? But you can also ask the question, ¿Cómo se eligen los líderes en tu país? ¿Cómo se eligen los líderes en tu país? So how are leaders elected or selected in your country? 
So in some countries, presidents are elected directly by the people. So in the United States, we have this electoral college, we have states, we're a democratic republic. So there's different layers of bureaucracy that other countries just don't have. Sometimes they actually just count the votes. Um, and there is no electoral college, there's no other like intermediary processes. Uh, but in others, they might have a parliament or they might have a different electoral body. So again, this is a great way to learn about the election process. Um, and also begin to learn how to explain a little bit about US politics uh, when you're talking to uh, your friends and um, your language exchange partners that you know may be from uh, other countries or even currently living in, in Latin America. So uh, again, I hope you have found this helpful. These are just a couple of things that you can talk about today that you can begin to use some of these phrases. And I hope I've armed you with a little bit of information about uh, how to have these conversations, whether you would like to get deeper or not. Uh, but this is a great way to sort of be able to address it because you know it's going to come up whether or not you you want to bury your head in the sand, whether you're excited about the election, whether you're nervous. You can say, estoy emocionada, you know, I'm excited, or estoy emocionado if you're a male. Uh, however you want to express it, but uh, but definitely this is something that will undoubtedly come up um, over the next uh, few weeks and months to come. So I hope that you feel a little bit more comfortable <laughs> with having conversations. Now, there are some songs, because again, this is, the Learn Spanish Con Salsa podcast. So I can't leave you without music. So next week's episode, we're actually going to go into uh, the lyrics of a song, um, another classic salsa that talks about social and political issues in Latin America. And I think it's a great song. I mean, there's there's definitely many different, um, you know, songs about uh, different uh, political ideals. We're not, again, going to get too deep into any one sort of uh, country's political uh, history. It's not what we do here, but we are going to talk about the music uh, and the culture uh, that comes out of some of that and, and some of the issues that are shared um, among uh, the Latin American population, not only that currently still live in Latin America, but also in the diaspora as you have Latinos who uh, have, have moved uh, from Latin America and live all over the world um, for several, several different reasons. It's not always, you know, seeking political asylum. So, uh, but in many cases, there are some things about social justice that are common threads. So we will be exploring that in next week's episode with a salsa song. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you want to get the show notes and see some of these phrases so that you can begin to practice them and learn some of these facts that I mentioned about women in politics in Latin America, make sure you go to learnspanishconsalsa.com slash 216 for episode 216 of the podcast. And as always, I hope something that you heard in this episode has helped you go one step closer from Spanish beginner to bilingual. Hasta la próxima. Thank you for listening to the Learn Spanish Home Salsa podcast at LearnSpanishHomeSalsa.com.